Hello, all my fellow network engineers out there on the internet. Welcome to our vlog series, Demystifying Ansible for ACI, where we go over topics that involve using Ansible to get things done on your ACI fabric. My name is James Kaiser, and I'll be your host for the duration of this series. Today, we're going to be talking about how to pull information out of your APIC using the ACI REST module, and then filtering that response out using JSON queries with James Path filtering. Uh, I'm going to start by saying if you haven't watched some of the other videos, please pause this video and start there. You may miss out on some information because I'm going to kind of be skipping over a few things. But if you're good to go, then let's carry on. First file we're going to be looking at is our inventory file called host. Nothing's changed there. We've added a new playbook called get underscore bd.yaml. This is going to be our playbook to grab bridge domain information. Our setup, really nothing's changed. The host section, the vars section, the vars prompt section, all that's mostly the same. I still have our user generation commented out so that we can kind of save some time on the playbook and not have to worry about generating that information. And we have our ACI REST module that we're going to be using to query the actual bridge domain. Now, the APIC I'm using is a lab APIC, and there's a lot of other people that have some information on here. So I'm going to, instead of querying all the bridge domains, I'm going to narrow down my search to a specific tenant. But I am going to show you how you would query all the bridge domains in, in your fabric. So uh, out of the ACI REST module, most of the parameters are the same, host, username, private key, cert name, use SSL, validate certs, all that's nothing's really changed. The two major changes, we, or three major changes we want to really look at are the path, the method, and the register, which isn't actually a parameter of ACI REST module. It's just something we're going to do along with the ACI REST module. The method is get. I'm going to skip around a little bit. The method is get. In the other ones, we were doing post. This one we're doing a get because we want to pull the information out of our APIC. So our method is going to be get when we do our API call. The path, now this path is specific to a tenant, the Lumos test tenant. Because again, I only want to query the bridge domains of that tenant, so I am focusing my query on that tenant in the path. The query now, whenever you want to narrow down your search, you'd throw this little question mark after your path and all of this or some of this, depending on what you're trying to do. This is the query that is going to whittle down your, you, you know, the information that you get back. So I'm saying here, the query target equals the subtree and the target subtree class is the FVBD. So what that means is I don't just want the FVBD, which is the API code name, if you would, for bridge domain. Uh, I don't want just the bridge domain object itself. I want, in addition to that, the child objects or the subtree. And also, that subtree give me the full subtree, not just part of it or whatever. I want all the child objects of the child objects however many levels deep that may be. So basically what I'm saying with this query is, give me the bridge domain of the Lumos test tenant and every child object that goes with it. If I wanted all of the bridge domains in my entire fabric, I would use this path right here. This is now querying, not the tenant, but the class bridge domain. So pretty much I don't care what tenant you're in, if you're a bridge domain, return that value. I'm gonna comment that back out. So when I post this code on GitHub, uh, you can use the path below I instead if you needed to get all your bridge domains. Below that, I have the set fact module. And what I'm doing here is I'm using a James path filter to basically filter out some of the values that I get in my response. So what I'm doing is I'm setting a fact and I'm calling this fact BD underscore query. And this is the query string that I'm looking for. It's a long string. Basically what I'm saying is give me the values for these keys. What keys do I have here? When This might make a little bit more sense when I show you the response that we get from the APIC. 
because what you're going to get is a JSON structure structure that looks as such IM data, the FVBD for the bridge domain, and then under that level is attributes. And I'm looking for specifically the attributes.dn, the description, the broadcast IP, the MAC address, et cetera, et cetera. And some of these children and some of the children objects too. Right here, this one, this is the this is the VRF. So I'm looking for the VRF name of that bridge domain because this is a child object of the response. Again, when you, we when we go over the response, this will make a little bit more sense. I'm also setting another variable down here called BD post query. What I do is I take the response, BD underscore response, the take the data that was returned in the query that was registered as BD underscore response. I'm taking BD underscore response and I'm piping that to the Ansible JSON query filter. And I'm using the variable BD underscore query as my string that that is to be applied to the query. So the this big string, long string you see up here is going to be used as the query filter for the JSON query. OK, let's go ahead and run our playbook and uh, analyze the response that we get from it. Same commands, ansible dash playbook dash I specifying our inventory file called hosts. And we're going to execute the get underscore BD dot YAML file. We're going to do the dash VVV so we can see what we're getting. Type in the IP. Username password. We run it. And there we go. So let's scroll back a little and go over what we got. So here's our task that ran where we queried the bridge domain. I'll scroll up some. And we can look here and we see the IM data, the FVBD attributes. This is our payload. This is what we got in response when we did our query. If we scroll back in the buffer, we'll see this one here is BD101. Here is some of here are some of the child objects that go along with BD101. This one's our context, the VRF. In particular, and then the next one up, BD102, with all its attributes and values and the child objects that come with that. Now, if you had a lot of bridge domains, this would be a very long list. This is essentially what gets recorded to the BD underscore response. This is a response that came back from our query. We registered it as BD underscore response, and all of this data is going to be now referenced as the uh, the value BD underscore response. Here's our JSON query filter string. I set a variable called BD underscore query, and this was everything that I needed to filter out. This was all the basically all the data that I wanted. I didn't want all of this data. I just wanted a select few values. These were those values that I want. If I scroll up now, you can see after I ran the BD underscore response variable through the JSON query and applied the JSON query filter string, this is the data that I'm left with. And we called that BD underscore post underscore underscore query. So you can see here BD underscore post underscore query now lists our BDs with just the specific values that I requested. So now that we have our return data that's been filtered out to you know, specifically what we want. What we do with that data is really up to us. Um, maybe we want to further filter out some of that data, um, get rid of, I don't know, various strings that maybe we don't want. Uh, for example, one thing I might do is get rid of this uni tenant and the BD uh, dash along with some of the slashes. So I might throw this regex string or the regex replaces after in order to do that. Let's clean this up a little bit. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking the BD response, I'm piping that to the JSON query using the James path filter as part of that JSON query. Then I'm piping it to a regex replace to get rid of the uni tenant. And I'm doing another regex replace to replace anything 
forward slash BD dash with double dashes. So as you can see here, we have forward slash BD dash. We're going to try to replace that with double dashes. So if I save this, run my play again, Let's try that again. As you can see, now we've got rid of all the all the path structure in the in the DN and replaced the BD forward slash BD dash with double dash. So what we're left with is Lumos dash test dash dash BD 101. So that's just a small example of uh, one thing that we can do with the, 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 the manipulation. I'm going to get rid of that and normalize this. And if I run it again, we're back to normal with our path in the DM. There's so much you could do with this. Maybe you wanted to take that variable. So once you assign something to a variable, BD underscore post underscore query, I mean, I can now use that as a call to send that data somewhere else. Maybe I wanted to, I don't know, forward that that information over to a Splunk server. I don't know. Maybe I'm pulling critical uh, faults and I'm going to forward that over to some sort of collector. I mean, the possibilities are almost endless on what you can do. So... That's all we have for today. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Take care.